So how long does it take to inflate one tire at a time versus all four? And is there a way to easily pump all four tires up at once? Let's find out today. So I've got a box full of stuff to inflate my tires here. Uh, I'll have a link for everything down below, but we're gonna mess with this today. We're gonna make a four in one tire inflation system with a digital gauge and a deflation system in my Tesla Model Y. I have an ARB compressor in the front trunk. Let me show you that. Right up front here is my ARB compressor. Don't mind the speaker, I'm just playing with the noise, the sounds. But I've had this installed, uh, ARB sent this out to me a long time ago, and it's hooked up to a computer underneath my driver's seat. And it can control the tire pressure as far as, you set it to one pressure and it'll get there and stay there. Right here I have a, the chuck right inside the trunk there. And then you can take this over to the tire and you can deflate it or inflate the tire. Let's hook that up and let's deflate this tire. See how long it takes to inflate one tire versus all four tires. So let's just take this out and take the air out. As this is deflating, you know, it does work in the car, but I see this is, this is fairly easy to do and I can just hook that gauge up to this if I wanted to, but we're going to deflate this to, I don't know, we'll see how low it gets, maybe 20 PSI, and then we'll inflate this using the car up to, we really should inflate it up to 40 PSI for a Tesla and uh, we'll see how long that takes. And in the car, you can see on the screen here, it is 20 PSI, that front tire, and the car thinks it's too low, pull over safely. So that's what's really great about the ARB system and the Lynx system that this is all connected to. And I've gone over that before in a separate video. We're gonna see how long it takes to pump that tire up to 40 to 40 PSI. We're gonna change that, I wanna do 40 pounds. See how long it takes to do that. And then we'll time after we're done with everything, see how long it takes to do all four, cause then we can do the math and figure out, did we save any time? So a few benefits of this is when you're airing up your tires or airing down your tires, you get them all to the same tire pressure and because it equalizes through all of it because they're all hooked together with one line basically. Uh, you know, one's not at 21, one's not at 20, one's not at 15. You know, you know what they're all at. Same thing with inflating them up. Another reason you want, might want to do this when you're off-road is say you get a small leak in one of your tires. Say one tire gets pretty low and your compressor stops working. You can actually hook up all these tires together, combine the two tires or three tires or whatever together to equalize the pressure without the use of the compressor if it's not working for some reason. Because on the trail, sometimes it's hard to get a jack underneath the car and really I'm not gonna be carrying a jack, so probably should have some way of doing that. Anyway, there's a few benefits to this. Not only is it a little bit faster, uh, it saves you from bending over to every tire and then walking back around to the car to get inside to turn it on. I'm gonna end up putting an on-off switch in the front so I don't have to work with that mechanism inside the car anymore because I have the digital gauge. I don't need to use that anymore. Now with this and just an on-off switch in the trunk, I should be able to do all four tires in about six, seven minutes. All right, so now that I have the target pressure at to 40, the tire pressure right now is reading at 20. We're gonna hit pressure control and it's gonna start up. So we'll see that it's starting right now. It's going up a little bit. Doesn't take long for it to start going. And of course it's loud. pumping up the tire. Now it takes a little bit of break in between to really check the tire pressure and then it turns back on. That's what my system does for some reason. I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that. Leave a comment down below if yours does that because then I'd like to fix it if it does if it's not supposed to. And you see it's slowly getting up to the tire pressure. And it's gonna take a little bit of time. I'm gonna keep this rolling so I can figure out how long it takes through the camera. And then we're gonna do the same thing after we change everything to do all, everything at once. So there we go, we're at 40 PSI, target was 40 PSI. 
that took a little bit longer. That takes some time because it does turn on and off quite a bit as this compressor is trying to read it. Uh, it it's kind of hot, but not too hot. This is rated to run for an hour straight. That's the good things about ARB compressors. They're high temperature or they're high pressure and uh, they're made to run for a long time. Your average compressor that you buy at Walmart or something like that is only good, if, if it ran that long, it would only inflate one tire probably until it got too hot and it'd probably burn up and you wouldn't be able to do the other tires. This is good to run for a com complete hour and then it needs to rest for an hour. I wanna, I'm very curious to see how long it takes to do all four tires. Let me get all the parts and pieces out and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna hook this up and you could do it differently if you want to. Maybe, you're, maybe your compressor isn't up front and you do it in the rear or you have it inside the center console or you have it in the back of the car if you have a Jeep or something like that. You can route the wires how, or the lines however you want. But I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it because mine's up front. So this is kind of just mocked up right now. I got to get some other fittings, so I'm going to run to the store and get some more. But let me show you basically what I have here. As you guys know, this comes right from the compressor. So I have a line coming this way into the bottom of this shutoff valve. And basically, if I want to release the pressure, I'm just going to open that valve up with this off. And then it's just going to release the pressure. Because when I'm not putting air into the vehicle, I'm not going to have that hooked up. So I'm just going to take it off of here. When I shut it off, I'll be able to turn this digital gauge on and be able to see what the tire pressure is of all four at once. And if I, when I do inflate the tires, I'll just push this in there and this will be opened so it can flow through just fine. But this side will run down here to, to a T here. And of course I got to get fittings for here uh, or clamps here. And you can run multiple different clamps. I'm just going to get hose clamps and just ratchet them down. Uh, it's going to be just fine. This T is running up to this tire here, and this is a really nice connection. See, there's three sections in there. When you pull back on this, those open up, and then when you close it, it clamps down onto three spots, and it won't come off of there once, you know, all this is tightened up and everything. I just kind of had to sit in there for the video. And then as this runs down, I made sure to cut this off so I can go to the farthest point of the wheel and even though the valve's right there. And once we have all four of these connected and once everything's nice and tight, there's no air leaks or anything, we will be able to pump all four tires up at once. I'll buy all the extra pieces that I need for this and I'll show you what the final product is. You don't need me to go through and show you how to use a clamp. I mean, if you don't know how to use a clamp, you shouldn't be doing this, but they they sell kits like this. You can just buy this from somebody online for maybe 100 or 150, 200 bucks. I paid just over 100 bucks for all this stuff. The, probably the most expensive part was I upgraded to these. Now you can get those side clamp things like I have for, for the single one, which I will be carrying the single one too, because if someone has a flat tire and then just one tire, I still want to just pump up that one tire. These were $48 for the four of these things. So that was a splurge for this, but I think it's going to be a little bit better. It's not going to be any leaking or anything. And it's just going to be a better product all, on, all around. So here is the green zombie spaghetti. Let me show it to you right here. I have the control. I ended up putting the control up here because this actually made a Y and this is for a Model Y, so why not? Heh, why not? And here is the connection that'll go there. So I have the digital gauge here, which we turn it on. And right now I have three of the tires hooked up and they're all 35 PSI. I'm gonna show you how to hook up the, the other one. It's capped off here, so it's not gonna be blowing out there. If I open up this, it's gonna release the pressure. And what's really nice about this is it'll do decimals. So this is 35-ish. So what I have, this runs down to here. That T goes up into the tire. This one runs down here. That one goes right up into the tire. And the same thing on this side. That one goes right there. And let me show you how to hook these up. Super easy. You just unscrew this, obviously. You take this and you're gonna push and push up on this at the same time. So you, you get a full seat and now it's not gonna release any air. So now with all four tires hooked up just to the hose, they've equaled pressure between all of them at 35 PSI. And we can double check that by doing this again. Now that all four tires are there, it reads 35.1 PSI. Now if I pull this, it's going to release the air out of here. So we're just gonna leave that down there. Whoa, probably don't wanna do that. <laughs> probably wanna control this because it's gonna come out quite, quite fast. And if we let go, see if we drop this, it looks like it's dropping a lot. And it is. 
because there's just air being released. But you see, we only went down to 33 PSI, so we can lower this down quite fast, all four tires. So on the trail, I'll be able to figure out how many seconds it takes to go down, and I can just count that pretty much. So I don't have to keep turning it on, turning it off, turning it on, turning it off. Hook it up to the compressor there, and now, now there's a leak. Oh, there's a leak in the fitting. Uh, now when we turn the compressor on, this will pump up all four tires at the exact same time because this is feeding into here, branching out, and then going everywhere else. Now if I want to stop this, all I have to do is this, and there's no airflow going past this point. And that's how we read the exact tire pressure. I'm going to deflate the tires to 20 PSI, all four tires, and then we're going to run the compressor and we're going to see how long it takes. All right, that's as close as I'm getting. All the tires are down to 20%. You can see why we want to lower the tire pressure uh, off-road because this tire flattens out a little bit and then gets longer. So you get a lot more traction with the tires this low. But you can't do this with every tire. These off-road tires are designed to be going slow with low tire pressure. Now I'm going to go even lower when I go into sand. We're going to go to like 17 PSI. And I probably won't do 20 PSI off-road uh, because this car is very heavy. I'll probably just probably, because it's going to, we're not going to be going off-road. We're going to be doing like soft road kind of stuff. So I'm probably going to put them to right around 25 PSI. Let's plug it all in, go in the car and see how long it takes. And the car reads it at 19 PSI because eh, we were right there. Maybe it's, maybe uh, the car is rounding down. Now I'm gonna leave this running, but it's gonna take a while because it's doing all four tires at once. So uh, we're up to 21% already, or 21 PSI already, but it's gonna do all four. So it's just one connection and we go. And now what I'm gonna do, this red, the red 40 inside, this is 39.5. I capped this off, I'm gonna get disconnect here. And we're going to see if this will hold at 39.5. Make sure there's no air leaks. So it's been an hour. And let's check to see if we lost any pressure. 39.4. It was 39.5. So we barely lost. No, actually, it was still the same. 39.5. It just went up. 39.6. Uh-oh. How are we gaining pressure? Anyway, we didn't lose anything. Uh, so those, all the seals are really good. So obviously this does work. It fully uh, inflates all the tires at the same time. But again, I think I have this hooked up wrong. If there's anybody out there that has hooked up one of these before, does yours turn on and off like that? I definitely have something hooked up wrong. I mean, it does build up pressure and it does do that, but it should be running constantly until I turn it off or... But the way I have this set up now with the digital gauge up there, I don't really need the thing inside. I don't need to walk around and, and set that. I just need an on off switch in the frunk and then I can see the digital gauge right there. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. That's, I think that's the best way to do it. And then this will be way quicker. And I'll probably do a test with that because I'm gonna have both cables in there. I'm gonna have the green wire to do all four. And I'm gonna take the red one that I had originally because if I wanna do one tire for somebody that's got a flat tire on the side of the road, I can just do that. I don't have to hook up all four. I haven't reviewed the footage. Obviously, I've already put the numbers up there. But maybe I'll... and. Uh, Obviously, you'll see me doing this in the videos while I'm out on my trip. Coming up soon. Coming up very soon. Please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, you have to subscribe just for the stuff that's coming up this summer. Absolutely amazing. No one else is doing this. It's going to be awesome. Speaking of awesome, stay awesome, stay positive, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'll see you.